Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today's going to be another episode in my Throwback Thursday series where I'm basically taking some old content which I found on a hard drive during my house move. As you can see, I'm in my new workshop now. It's nice, it's pretty, it's beautiful, it's clean for now. But this is a video which I live streamed on Twitch on the 21st of March 2022 and it never made a video on YouTube. It's the 16th of March 2023 right now. So just about a year old and it's a hard drive. It's content which I found on a hard drive while I was uh, basically uploading everything to my NAS. So in this video, I attempted to repair a PlayStation 4 Slim. I'm not gonna spoil the result, but I attempted to repair a PlayStation 4 Slim which had a Wi-Fi connectivity issue. So the issue this was facing was that it was lagging and really struggling to load any kind of Wi-Fi options. And when it did eventually load, it couldn't pick up any Wi-Fi networks at all. It would connect to Ethernet, so Ethernet was absolutely fine. And it would connect to Bluetooth, which is very strange because usually when we get Wi-Fi issues on the PS4, they don't connect to Bluetooth either, which means you can't normally connect a controller. So it was a little bit of a strange issue and one that I hadn't come across before. So I hope you enjoy it. It'll be interesting to know your thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. If you do want to organise a repair, you can check me out. Link in the video description. Consolefix.co.uk. You can send over your device and I'll attempt to repair it. As long as you give me some of your hard-earned money. I won't do anything without money. But with that being said, enjoy the video and I'll see you all on the outro. Today's video is brought to you by my own online store. Whether you need HDMI ports or charging chips, you'll probably find it a console fix. We sell disk drives and power supplies. Just trust me bro, I tell no lies. If you need stuff, just check the store, because I'll probably find one on my workshop floor. I've got parts to get you going, and I already know. This ad, it's mind blowing. So get your wallet out, don't be a dick. Just spend your money, a console fix. Alright, I'll stop rhyming now. Console fix! Right, let's have a look what's going on with this. Network. Set up internet. Huh, not picking up Wi Fi. Not connecting to Wi Fi, okay. Does it connect to the internet through Ethernet? Right, let's just wait for this to load. It always sticks on this screen for some reason. It's weird. Yeah, that's really hanging, but it's not picking up. It wasn't picking up Wi-Fi when I did manage to get it to pick up. So, yeah, I think there's definitely an issue with the Wi-Fi I see there. But that's still trying to shut down. That like it's it's hanging on shut down as well. It's just shut down. I've got a feeling that Bluetooth is going to fail soon as well. But that yeah, it's hanging on a white light as well now. Uh, like a blinking white light. Um, as you can see, it's still hanging on the blinking white light. Now it's gone off. Like it shouldn't have took that long to shut down. I really need to start doing some of my own retro stuff, to be honest. I've got a capture card that I can use on them as well now. There we go. Right, there is the thermal pasta removed. And the Wi Fi IC, let me pop under the scope. Alright, what Wi Fi IC is this? It's the AWCB262. AWCB262. I don't even know if I've got one of them, I'll be honest. Before I even touch this, I'm going to find a matching module. There you go. Right, okay, so I'm going to remove this. So inside, inside this module, this isn't actually a chip. This isn't actually a chip. It's, it's actually a PCB. I know that seems a little bit weird, but it's actually a PCB. So if I was to remove the shield, then 
you see that we've got an entire circuit under there. I'll grab one in a minute. I've got one on the desk somewhere which I could show you. Um, I don't want to destroy this one just in case replacing doesn't fix it. I'll put this one back on. But this is a this is basically a PC, a BGA PCB. So it's got BGA. It's got a BGA underneath. Something like, it's only something like 20 sol 20 solar balls or something like that. Um, but it's basically a PCB with BGA connections on it, which is basically solder balls. So we're going to desolder this one. Desolder one from a donor board, and then resolder it on. There we go, so that's... Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I knocked off the antenna. There you go. It's all good. This is a module. This is what a module looks like underneath. So you've got a chip on there and then you've got a shitload of capacitors and resistors and then you've got a, a little clock as well, a little clock chip as well. But that's what it looks like underneath the actual, um, underneath the shield. But that is the inside of a, um, a Wi-Fi module. And it's literally just a circuit board. Literally just a circuit board. Any way to prove it's a module before we're unsoldering? Not as far as I know. Um, you could probably take read, reading from the resistors, but if it's not on those specific lines, then you probably wouldn't know anything different anyway. Um, honestly, it doesn't take long to change anyway, so I'll just replace it regardless. So, ow, I'll just can then put in my microscope. <laughs> I'm going to replace the solder that's on here. With some leaded solder. There we go. And then I'm going to desolder. Uh, I'm going to wick this solder away and flatten the pads like we would with any normal BGA. Okay, okay. There we go. And now I need to get this chip off here, which is my donor chip. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Shut up, multimeter. Same process again, but this time on the chip. Well, I call it a chip, it's not a chip, it's a module. But it's the same process with the wicking. We'll grab some solder. There we go. Just going to wick this away. Do, do, do. And there we go. Let's clean off some of that flux there. Next we're going to add some flux. And then I'm going to replace all of the solder balls. With some fresh solder balls. So these ones... The biggest solder balls I've got are 0.76 millimeters, so they're the ones I use. Just 
too many there, but never mind. So it doesn't really matter what size solder ball you use as long as they're all the same size. So they look too small, but honestly they're fine. I bought King Bob two days ago, and it's done a job for less money, like you say. Oh, sweet, mate, nice. Yeah, King Bob is... There's nothing wrong with King Bob. I don't know why people insist on using Amtech, just because all of the... Uh, all of the other channels use it. Like... I refuse to spend that much money on blocks, regardless of what anyone ever says to me. Damn it, this fucking tweezers. Um, let me get a pair of tweezers, what mice actually were, shall we? Do, 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 do. These ones. If you ever want to practice reboarding by hand, because we haven't got a stencil for these chips at all. So if you ever want to, if you ever want to practice reboarding by hand, do it on these. They don't have to be perfectly aligned as well, by the way. Right, you can just drop it on the pad. Because when you heat it up now, it's going to flow itself down anyway. Look, it's going to... It's going to even itself out regardless. As soon as I drop some heat on this and it starts to flow the solder. I'll leave it at 480 degrees Celsius. That doesn't really matter too much. Could go lower, I could go 440, but... Nah. But literally 1% of hot air just to lock the balls in place. And then I'll increase the airflow when I know the balls are not going to move. Loose ball hanging off bottom edge. Yeah, I did just uh, notice that. There you go. Thank you. It's not a major issue if there's one or two balls. Loose around the edge, but it's best to not leave them there. I'm moving closer. There you go. You see that? See how they're all spreading out on the pads? Beautiful. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of flux once that's cooled down a bit. Uh, I'm at 480 degrees Celsius, 1% airflow at the minute. I'm about to change the airflow to 20%. Just as soon as I've added a little bit of flux. So even though they're flowed, I want to flow them properly with flux. Send them all nice and shiny. Right, the mat's expanded a bit. There you go. My shaky hands will just launch them everywhere. Um, there is a technique to that. There is a technique for that, for shaky hands. And it's a very effective technique as well. So if you... If you look at my hand, 
King Bow is nine pounds six plus two for twenty four posts for twelve tubes and that yes it is yeah. Yeah if you look if you look at my hand when I'm moving I'm not gonna do it with this one because this chip's hot. Let me move that out of the way. Uh, let's say I'm dropping solder balls on here. I'm not free hanging my hand like that. Can you, you can see my hand moving like even now you can see my hand moving. So what I do is this part of my hand is always resting on the table. Always resting on the table. And then look how steady my hand am now. Incredibly steady. I'll show you that under the microscope. So, chips here. If, I, if my hand's just hovering over the table, look, I'm not putting none of this on. You've got no chance of keeping your hand still. Now, with my hand resting on the table, um, I've got to be careful that that part of the table is actually still red hot. But now, with my hand hovering over the table, Still not perfect. But as near as damn it. So yeah, there you go. By the way, you really can't mess this up. Like on these PS4s, you really can't mess up this chip install. Like if you look, you've got one pad missing. One pad. So literally all you do is just line it up. And you just know that it's in the right place. Uh, that it's, it's in the right, right orientation. I mean, you can only go one of two ways anyway, but, but you can only go that way or that way. But you really can't mess it up when you've got one pad missing. Honestly, one of the easiest jobs in the world, this is. There we go, a bit of flux. And spanking new second hand cheap. And drop that in place. Um, one little tip for lining these up. If this is out of line, so let's say that's out of line there now. If you press down on the chip, any BGA, this counts for any BGA. Don't do it on glass feet, glass BGA chips or you'll crack them. Uh, if this is out of line and you wiggle it, it's going to move. Now if you get it lined up, And then you push down on it and wiggle it. She's not going to move. So if you want to get it lined up, let's say for example, you know roughly where it needs to go, just press down on it and just keep wiggling it until it locks into place. Look, beautiful. And then that way you know 100% that it's lined up perfectly. And then you can just press down on the chip with your tweezers, move your finger away, and then move the tweezers away. Pro tips. Pro tips. Works for any cheap that does. Whoops. Except when the cup falls off and ruins your um, centre balance. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to flow this down. I'm still at 480 at 20% um, airflow. The reason I'm at 480 is because I've got to penetrate through a shield and a load of components underneath. It's actually come slightly out of line, but it doesn't matter. Surface tension, I'll pull it in. And there's more than enough distance between each board as well. For it to not cause any shorts. There you go, look. See that move? Let's keep the heat on for a minute. Give it a nudge and watch it spring back into action. Yeah, that's solid. Right, let's see if we get a 
Wi-Fi connection now, shall we? Right, let's see if it picks up Wi-Fi now, shall we? Yeah, buddy. Come on. Plot twist console ban from PlayStation Network. <laughs> Customer would still have to pay, mate. Regardless, like, that wouldn't be my fault. So, yeah, customer would still have to pay um, if that was the case. It's one of them things where, like, it, it's kind of a grey area because, like, you, you've technically fixed it, but then at the same time, like, you're like, oh, do I just do it as a discounted rate because I feel bad for them? But, you know, yeah. Um, Right, system info, and yep, Mac address is picking up, which is pretty obvious anyway. Uh, it's on 8.52, which means I am not going to be updating this because that is not my job. Um, and this is technically exploitable, so I mean, they probably want to get it fixed, but uh, they'll probably want to get it updated, but yeah. Or maybe they want to get it updated to um, 9.0 so they can exploit it. It seems to be working, but we're going to run through some tests. So I'll go through the test sheet. Uh, it's technically the 22nd of the 3rd. Uh, apart from testing a game disc, which I'll do, I'll do off stream. It's all working. And that is signed off and done. So yeah, another one done. Um... Bit of a different sy symptom to usual. So normally when the Wi-Fi module fails, the Bluetooth module goes with it and it prevents you from connecting to even a, even a controller. Um, usually when that happens, you can connect to a controller in safe mode. And the reason for that is because the controller works two different ways depending on what you're doing. If you're on a normal dashboard, so if you're normally in the operating system, then even if you're connected through USB, it still uses the Bluetooth module, so it passes through the Bluetooth module. Whereas if you're in safe mode, it bypasses the Bluetooth module and just uses USB. Which is why sometimes if your controllers are not connecting, you can put it into safe mode and you can still connect. Because it, it works two different ways. Safe mode, USB, and dashboard, it works through the Wi-Fi module. If it doesn't connect through either through safe mode and through the dashboard, then normally you've got either a safe bridge or a no flash run issue. There we go. All done. Nice and working. Nice and working? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that was a nice easy fix. The Wi-Fi module, as you've just heard, usually fails along with the Bluetooth module, but for some reason on this one it didn't. It just had the Wi-Fi issue. So let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this video? Do you enjoy the throwback series? Do you want to see more? I would really love to know your thoughts. Like I said earlier, if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, that way you don't miss any future videos. Again, if you do want to organise a repair, consolefix.co.uk, you can check me out and book in the console over there. And if you do want to support me in any way, you can head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to Twitch. And then that way you can subscribe to my Twitch channel. So usually you can follow for free, but you pay to subscribe on Twitch. So you can subscribe to my Twitch channel completely free if you've got an Amazon Prime account. You just link it to Twitch because they're owned by the same company. And then you get one free subscription every month. You do have to renew it manually, but you get one free subscription every month. And that massively helps me out. But anyway, that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.